everyone welcome back to the channel um, so tonight working on the shop car thought I'd uh, show you what I'm working on and uh, yeah nothing too big um, just kind of getting some small stuff done one of those things we got to do is mount the parachute so um, basically we're gonna be kind of tucking it under this wing but also letting it you know free fall come out that way uh, you know it doesn't get tangled up under the car and stuff so I got our chute mount that's going to connect to the tube this is still really hot because it's stuck on welding so that's going to be connected to this this slip tube um, I still got to trim it down I want to see what length I want to run but um, got a hole in there for the half inch bolt to run through that's under the car currently but um yeah, nothing too complicated. I'm just gonna show you guys what we do. Um, we don't really have any kit or anything for this, so it's kind of each car that comes in, it's custom fit. Um, but like I said, we have a Stroud air launcher. Um, this makes it a lot easier to pack. You don't have to struggle with a, uh, a spring. So pretty nice setup. And then we got a Stroud 430 parachute. Um, make sure you're sizing those right. Um, they have a chart on their website where you can um, size it out to your car, your mile an hour, your eighth mile stuff. So um, like I said, we went to 430, which I think is right on the line of a 420 and a quarter mile, but we're doing eighth mile. So they, they had you add like 40 mile an hour to it. Um, so it put us in the 430 range so i'm sure it'll be quite the hit when it fully expands because <laughs> the car is pretty light but uh, at least it'll get a stop so i'm gonna get this unpacked and get it set up in the bag because we have to mock it up and see where we want stuff but i will uh pick you guys back up in a second all right so first step we gotta do i got a piece of tubing we are going to make the outer frame for this so we'll have uh, quarter inch tabs on each corner and then this is the frame that will box it all in. So i got my Bentec. We just drew it up on Bentec. It's just a simple square. Um, but it's good to have these numbers and that way I know and I can duplicate it every time and it makes the same thing every time. Which is very, uh, very important. So I'm just going to be marking off the four bends here. Trying to make these as accurate as possible because by the time you make all four um, and then come back, you want these to be pretty even so the ends land together and I'll show you that in a second. I'm trying to make them as straight and nice as possible. So there's my lines. Um, so. I'm going to get this over to the bender. We just use a small 3 8 hand bender. And uh, so I'm going to make it this. So I know which ends to start with, but it's usually obvious because this marks way shorter than where this marks at. So um, I'm going to go over there and get this bent up. And then uh, I'll pick you guys back up over there. So coming over here. Uh, it might look like I'm in the dark. That's because uh, one of our ballasts on our lights went out. So if you can't see anything, let me know. But it kind of sucks because it's one of, we have two benches that we work off of and our largest one and the light went out right above it. So it's uh, real interesting. Of course that one would go out. So everything else in the shop's LED, but these are still fluorescent. So I still have a ballast. So. All right, I'm gonna get this set up in here and set you guys down. Uh, this is just a small, rigid hand bender. Uh, they're pretty nice, a little pricey for, I mean, it's, it's nice, so I'm not gonna complain because it is a nice tool. Uh, makes pretty nice bends, so. Get this tightened, I gotta tighten up pretty well or it don't pop out, but. 
So I'm going to put this through here. And I have already have it marked out, obviously. So basically just going to work it to 90 each time. Uh, and make sure I'm keeping it flat. That is the uh, most important part. I'll show you guys why in a minute. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to sight across the, I'm going to sight across this. I'm going to look across this and kind of line it up with the top of the die. Um, obviously it's not going to be that perfect. I can tweak it when I get there, but this uh, fender holds it pretty tight. So um, I don't have to worry about it too much, but I'm just going to 90. Um, it does have spring back, obviously, because it's tubing, so I do have a small mark here, past 90. Um, that way I know where my actual 90 is at. Probably should just keep these in inventory, because we do use them a lot, but they're easy to make, so... I guess we could put them on the website. So this is what I was talking about being straight. So as you can tell, I'm a little off um, just from bending it, but I'll fix that in a second. I'm just gonna get this last bend as good as possible. So this is what we're talking about when we cross them. They're, uh, they each meet up and then I'll show you how we go about welding it. I'm going to tweak this one a little bit because it's a little off. So I'm going to go ahead and get these straightened out a little bit. Usually they're just a little big. They usually uh, I have a habit of making things not 90 and on the big side. So this isn't too terrible. This is actually kind of nice when it does this. So these aren't biting each other, but this one is off. Um, once I get them cut, I will show you what I do. Um, but you can go ahead and you know mark these, check these out as 90. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna see which one's not 90 and then work it from there. They're all a little big. So you can work these by hand pretty well. Uh, usually gets it pretty close. So I'm gonna go over the bandsaw and show you guys what we do to get these uh, connected. All right, so basically there's not really a science to this. Um, it's kind of, it's a little tricky. Um, basically I'm just gonna cut these right in the middle. Um, I do spread them out a tiny bit. So when I cut them the blade width, um, isn't you know you don't have a gap here because if I cut this I'm gonna have a gap between this leg and this leg so I'm gonna turn this on I'm gonna get it cut and then uh, we'll see how well I did pretty much just connect them like that I gotta tweak this a little bit um, now that this one's not in the way of this one I can kind of work these a little better so I get these pretty pretty well uh, squared up it is still a tad big on all of the corners and by big I mean it's just the angle is probably like 88 or 89 um, not bad on the rest of them, I think it's just this corner, so by the time I hold these together, um, it'll be square. So I just double check, make sure it's not anything wonky. But, yeah, that's pretty good. So now um, I'm going to sand this. Totally forgot to sand it while it's straight, which is a ton easier, but uh, and then we will go ahead and weld this together 
and sand that smooth so you'll have basically a seamless uh, shoot mount. So while I let this cool off, um, I did make sure to, this is one thing to note when you're doing this, um, make sure you build up the weld a little bit. Um, make sure you don't have it, you know, concave and have a valley because if you want this to look seamless, um, you're gonna wanna sand it down and then it'll give you the look of, you know, not being welded. So if you don't care about that, you can just leave it like that and it won't matter too much um, I'm gonna let this cool off because it's pretty hot um, I'm gonna get the tube for the shoot mount done and weld it on that way we can uh, set that in the car and we can build off of that so I got the tabs welded on um, this is kind of still hot I would pick it up and show you but um, I always draw an eighth inch hole on here because because this is a closed tube, um, it's the same concept as the roll cages. If you don't drill a hole and then you weld these tabs, at one of these tabs you're gonna have a massive hole that blows out and it just ruins your gas lenses and it's just not fun. So uh, pop an eighth inch hole. After this cools off, I'll grind it down and do like we did over here and make it look like nothing occurred. Um, but yeah, tabs are on there. So I got that pattern that's on the tabs transferred to this, which this doesn't have any holes in it. So now it's got holes. Um, and then I'm basically going to slide this in here. And then I'm going to take a, it's just a punch we use. Um, it's not really anything fancy. And then heat it up and then poke holes in the bag. That way we can put a uh, quarter inch bolts through there. So let me go grab the torch and the punch and I'll show you how we do that. Here is the punch that we use. Um, like I said, nothing fancy. And I'm basically just gonna heat it up where it's red hot. And I'm gonna make sure that these holes are kinda exactly where I want them because once you punch this hole, kinda stuck where it is. But uh, So now that I got that, inside, got that set in there and the holes are where I need it. Just kind of fold these flaps back. And basically all I'm going to do, I'm going to heat this up and I'm going to poke through the bag. So that way, if you were to drill this, it would just leave like really frayed ends and whatnot. So um, basically this, and it's kind of like burning the end of a rope. Uh, it just kind of gives it an end to it and doesn't fray. So. <laughs> Basically, just gonna poke it through the bag like so. It smells horrible, but you know, gotta do what you gotta do. So basically, I just go around and find the holes first. Um, sometimes it cools down and doesn't let you, <laughs> so you gotta reheat it.
So now that I got the initial holes punched, I'm gonna go through this side to make sure it's opened up. So that's pretty much it. That's all we do. Uh, as you can tell, on the back side, it leaves a nice ring that's uh, hardened up, so it won't ever fray. So all that does, um, there's nothing really structural here. All this does is hold the bag in the chute. Um, and there's, I mean, there's no way it can come off because the, the, this plate is in there. So it ain't going anywhere. It's basically just to hold the plate. So nothing real structural. So I'm going to get this bolted up. Um, and then we're going to get this bolted on the back of it um, and then we're going to take it to the car. I'm going to put the chute in it. That way we can mock it up and see where we want it to fit. So like I said, basically make it look like nothing's there. So that was that eighth inch hole right there. So um, yeah, it's pretty much gone. So I'm going to go ahead and get this bolted up, grab some quarter inch bolts here, probably just use some regular nuts on here so I'll be taking it back off probably about a million and a half times so Basically the main concept of this, some people haven't seen this, um, it's got that plate in there and then when you get back to the pits, pack the chute, you arm the air system that goes to this cylinder, basically puts pressure on that uh, bag over there and then when you pull the chute cord or you lose your uh, pull string, that's important, when you pull the chute it you know pulls the uh, I guess the pin as you call it, it's the chute cable. When you pull a chute cable, um, the pressurized cylinder forces the bag out. So when you're packing it, you don't have to fight a spring. You're just, you know, basically just, this'll be kind of, if I can do this one hand, kind of like that, obviously a little further out, but then you basically just push it back in and then you throw the bag in there. So it makes it a little simpler, um, especially with just one person. So here is the chute, uh, kind of mocked up right here. I got couple of our mock-up stands and jigs there um, but it's kind of what we're looking for um, I might angle it a little bit more up and out um, I just don't want it to get caught on these spikes here I don't think it will but I just want to be sure um, as you can tell we got this in there it's bolted in um, don't mind our massive hole that was our bumper fitting fiasco they uh this doesn't fit the best um until you cut off like the bottom half the quarter so we basically cut off from this line down um, i don't know if that was the correct way we got this bumper used so um, i didn't really have anything good to go off of from the beginning but now it's got two zeus's on there and it fits really well but this was 
the result of us uh, attempting to fit it and fit that hole while we went. So don't mind the, uh, the finger width gap there. So, um, but yeah, I'm probably about done for tonight. Um, I'll probably come back at this in the morning and then I need to make two cups that fit on either side of this. And then we can start running a couple bars out to the, uh, the support we built earlier. So, um, yeah, that's about it for tonight. I'll catch back up with you in the morning and we'll start laying some tubing out and getting all of that situated and actually held in a spot. All right, back out here. Uh, still working on parachute mount. So skipped a few steps for you guys, which sorry about, I'm just trying to get this done. Um, we're attempting to paint this weekend. I know I've said that before, but it's uh, how it goes. We just, all of us run out of time to work on it. And, uh, we're really getting down to the wire, so we're kicking in some more hours, um, but hoping I have painted this weekend. So hopefully we can make that happen. But um, here's what we got so far. Um, basically, I welded these little cups uh, last night, and then I've just been working on um, you know getting these rods so this is how we do it on the upper ones so it's gonna be kind of dark and hard to see because it's dark up in here but we have these three bolt um, flanges that we put and I set the uh, license plate up here because you know streetcar stuff so it's gonna sit just like that with that upper rod coming out like that uh, that way we can still have a plate and then the rods run out um, this is the piece we welded last night, um, this square um, tubing. And then we have all of these support rods that run down to here. Um, one runs back to here, that will be bolted. This will be bolted up here with like a 1032 uh, screw and nut. That way we can take the whole chute mount off without having to unbolt those three bolt flanges. Um, but yeah, basically just I'm just working on just connecting everything in there, uh, making it strong. Um, so yeah, nothing too complicated. Uh, I've almost got it done. So um, I'll kind of show you guys. I have one more to fit and then uh, I'm gonna do one across the top if I can get to it. Um, the wing's kind of tucked up in the way, but we're getting there. Should be hanging on its own tonight. Um, I'm going to get it somewhat tack welded. Um, that way it can be set. And I can take those jigs off and uh, it can kind of be resting on its own. So I'm going to get this finished up and show you the result. All right, so here is the uh, final product. Don't mind the mess, it's a little late out here. So I'll clean up in the morning, but the chute is on there and we got a pretty good angle here um, so when the air does release and pushes the plunger out the chute pack will come up in the airstream and uh, won't get caught in the dead air that's back here so um, it looks pretty good it'll look good when it's on the ground um, so yeah pretty happy with that um, I still have to finish welding it, but I'm gonna take the chute pack off of it and weld more on the car just so things don't move around and whatnot. Um, but I don't really have it bolted down either. So it's a little janky on there, but it is on there. So I'm excited, it's another step. Um, Mark got a little bit more Bondo work done. Got some more done on the roof. And then he put some more down so we can sand this off and get these spots smooth again. So, I'll uh, keep you guys updated this week. I'll probably work on it a little bit tomorrow night. And uh, I know Mark's gonna keep sanding on it. I'll probably help him with the body work a little bit just to get that rolling. Uh, but other than that, it's almost ready for paint.